Hello, Sim Gamers. We're back with another episode. This episode in two parts, actually, featuring the Brig, the largest and most expensive ship currently available in Sailwind Early Access. This ship features two masts. It's a square rigged ship. Uh, we have a mainsail with a spanker. We have a foresail with a jib. Uh, the ship has an enclosed cabin where I've stuck my bed and my stove. Um, there is a cot below decks, but I use that area for additional storage for water and food supplies. For this mission, our cargo manifest includes 1,187 total pounds currently. Uh, we have 960 pounds of golden gems going to Happy Bay. And then we'll pick up additional cargo there to go with the rest of the stuff that we already have on board for Dragon Cliffs in part two. You can see the cargo space is very spacious. I've used less than a third of its total capacity in this trip. For this trip, I've loaded the following supplies. We have three barrels of water, two boxes of firewood, three boxes of hooks, one crate of fish, and enough lanterns to light the ship both above and below. With all that, back to the episode so we can get underway. Oh, one trick that someone showed me. was actually to crank this line, crank this. So this is a comment I got from YouTube. Crank this, actually release the four line, grab the aft one and pull it forward. And the ship will sort of fling itself to get moving. All right, did I, did I get the right one? No. <laughs> Since we're in port and we're dealing with, you know, not crashing into other ships, we'll just knock that one down and this one down to sort of get moving. Tighten this down all the way since we're <clears throat> going to be heading into the wind here. Well, not really. Whoa, steering wheel, steering wheel. Okay, it's over here. Let's turn the other way. I do not feel like um, attacking just yet. We do have some islands to navigate around. You know, this ship does pretty good on just two, <laughs> just the, these two masts. I have plenty of lanterns, no excuse to let it be dark. Man, this wheel has a lot of notches on the turn. It goes a full 720 degrees. Okay. Quick check on the wind. I wish I had wind socks on the lower deck. So we are running before the wind. Not much wind, but we're running running before it. So we're going to go ahead and just let all let out all of our yardage and really get moving. That track was Lean of Phobia by Harris Heller, part of the Stream Beats uh, Lo-Fi playlist. Okay, it looks like we're fairly, too, fairly clear of any big islands. We can go ahead and make our southward turn. 
South, southeast is the direction I want to go. And the same operating procedures for sailing this ship exists as any of the others. Once I leave sight of land, when I'm really going to start doing my navigation, my solar, my stellar and solar navigation, I should be specific. Because we're still navigating, we're just navigating by landmarks. We know where this island is. We're going to keep everything north and northwest of us. So they know where we're headed from, right? So sails are luffing because the wind is that way. So all I need to do is, oh, I need to let out all the tension on this sheet. And pull it in here. If I'm reading this right, we're, um, that's the, yes, that's the right one. It is hard to see because it is dark <clears throat> and this ship is large. Oh, I'm dumb. Well, that would work if I wanted to go in reverse. But I don't. Man, I really can't see these sails. I'm just going to go and pull this all the way. Looks like that's as tight as that gets anyway. All right. <clears throat> Ignore me mis misconfiguring my, <laughs> my sails the very first time. After having barely left port. Once I get things configured, more or less, am I happy with that, uh, with the jib and the, what's that thing in the back called again? Sp the spanker. Am I happy with the jib and spanker? E can't see anything, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to say yes. I'm happy with the jib and spanker. I'm ecstatic with the jib and spanker. We have managed to sail a little ways. Oh, I left one of these lanterns on. <clears throat> and ooh, I left another one on. Well, that's just residual, residual light from here. Um, grabbed a midnight snack of some of our backup fish. Let me just check my compass heading. I'm still happy with that. Based on the wind we're seeing right now, right? Um, so I'm going to grab some early morning fishing. Get things cooking on the stove. After this fish, I'm also curious to find out how fast I'm actually going. My guy could use some more sleep. Dawn was starting to break and he just sort of woke up. A few fish later. Come on, fish, come out of the water. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Ah, uh, I can only fit three fish, it seems. Okay, well, good to know. I'm just going to eat it. Give me a little hunger back. 
make sure we're hydrated. Gotta be a little careful about not burning through my lanterns. Otherwise, I'll burn through my lanterns. Our heading is good now that we've got things cooking on the stove. Let's get our uh, spanker tightened up for the wind. Let's check our speed, see how fast we're going. Looks like we're getting seven knots right now. Six, seven knots. Entirely too early in the morning. It looks like we're either in heavy wind or stormy waves here. We just got... We're just healing an awful lot. That's neither here nor there. I'll light up so I can see what the heck is going on. Oh no, this fish is burnt. Great. Grab a piece of wood and get these guys cooking. Just gotta remember to pull them off when they're ready to eat. All right, let's get a wind check here, get a heading check. Just a little farther eastward than I wanted for sure. So what that tells me, uh, if I want a balanced sail sailing experience, I've, what it tells me, first of all, is I've turned, turned too far. <laughs> Get myself south, south, southeast. That's what I want. And then, let's go ahead and pull out the compass. I want to see If my heading is drifting a lot. Seems like my heading is drifting towards the south, turning kind of drifting a little starboard. If that's the case, whoop, we can let out the the um, spanker. A lot of wind going on. Oh, we're, we've been taking on water. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, uh, that's a whole different ball of wax to deal with, isn't it? So we're going to reef these two sails.
bigger waves, bigger weather means more wind, which means more healing force, which in this case means potentially taking on water. So we're just going to avoid all that by reefing our sails a little bit. Oh, well, part of it is actually the wind has shifted considerably, so... What if I... Let out... Let out my sheet winches here. And pull these into a, a better sailing configuration. Trying to look for that. Perfect 45 degree angle. Off the wind. Same thing here. So those sails are filling out more. Means I can get more thrust for the same amount of of yardage, I guess. Yeah, let's see how that's looking. Now I've got some more work to do, right? That's the comp the complexity of this ship. So, again, the spanker's going to get let out. That's as far out as it gets let. Right? Yes. Um, and probably the jib as well. Eat all these before they burn. And if I'm happy with that, what time is it? Not even noon yet. Do some more fishing. Okay, I'm much more happy with that. Uh, heading's looking good. More fishing. Having a more difficult time getting caught up on my food supply of fishing that I need in this particular voyage than I did in the sandbuck for sure. Uh, what time is it, by the way? It's afternoon. So it's too late to do any longitude stuff, and I am out of sight of land. But at least we can go to our observation deck and get our latitude. So remember, we were closer to 41, so now we're at like 38. 38 latitude. All right, it is getting darker out. Again, we're going to do this Milniad sighting. It's a sunset sighting based on a particular star that follows the sun after sunset. Uh, in order, and in order to do so, I'm going to have a clear view of sunset and a clear view of the clock. So I'm going to go ahead and move. Hopefully the clock can sit on the rail over here. At an angle, like that. Yeah, it's perfect. Turn on lanterns to make it that much easier to see. Come on, clock. No. There we go.
And the secret sauce for this observation <clears throat> is to consult the chart on the wiki or print it off to have it available. And we're looking to observe this star, Milniad, the one that chases the setting sun at 7 p.m. That's 1900 hours. And when we do that, we compare the angle above the horizon to a chart we have. The lower it is on the horizon, the further east we are. Getting some water down below. After this reading, I think I want to reef. Reef the uh, mizzen mass and the main soles. For the trip through the night. There she is. Might be impossible to see on YouTube, but... Uh, especially since I, I play the game in 2K, it gets compressed down to 1080. Um, yeah, the star might just be hard to see, but it's pretty much... I'm going to put it right under the cursor. It's be hiding behind that cloud. Let's try and get an angle where I can more or less see the star and the clock. There we go. Maybe that'll work. Whip out the quadrant. Hold down Q, rotate the mouse a little bit just to make sure that the quadrant is actually set up. Okay, coming up on the reading now. One more tick. Boom. I'm calling that 15 degrees. Which, according to my chart, puts me at zero longitude, which means I haven't moved east hardly at all. Take that reading with a grain of salt. The noontime reading is going to be way more accurate. So we're at like 37 degrees latitude. Between 36 and 37. And we'll see what our longitude is in a little bit. The um, chrono compass sort of inverts this reading. In this case, we're reading for the gnomon, that little needle on the top of the sundial, to be directly over this north-south line with all the numbers on it. And then we're using the time and the difference in time from noon to get our longitude. The chrono compass does that the opposite way. It actually has a, a set of lines on it that shows you exactly what the deviation of the shadow is when you take a reading at noon. Well, you don't have to take it at noon, actually. You can take it anywhere between 11 and noon. Okay. Um, I got 11.10 or 11.50 on, on that reading. Does that sound about right? 11.50? Hey, a sim editor here. If any of these navigation instruments are confusing, check out the Navigator's Guide to Sailwind playlist linked here and in the description below. Back to the voyage. If we agree on 1150, mount that. 
then uh, that means we're between 8 and 12. So we're between 2 and 3, and uh, we were between 37 and 38. So basically right here on the map. <laughs> Uh, in the middle of that square, bounded by 37, 38, 2, and 3. So we'll continue south, southeast. That looks like we're right on course. Let's go ahead and put my sun compass away. Oh, interesting. The principal function of the spanker is to aid the ship in maneuver and to be set to assist the in the balance of the helm. <laughs> That's fascinating. Like it's its main purpose is to help the ship turn and also to balance the wheel. I learned something. Now I want to see how my sailing is right now as far as the um, turning force is concerned. So unfortunately, if I tighten the spanker, it is going to apply more turning force. I think I might just try to see if I leave a couple of pegs of port in on the wheel. And we are Kind of not in the greatest situation in this wind. So let's get rid of the main mast, maybe? Or this mizzen mast? The truth of the matter is, these masters are pretty poor at sailing close hauled. So maybe I. Let's try this. Let's try. Pulling up the mizzen mast all the way. Sail with just the foremast and the spanker. And see how that treats us as far as both turning and the healing force. Turning is good. Our rudder seems to have sort of righted itself. So now we're getting more pressure on the front, which is tending to make us turn port. And that's something I can deal with. Because what I can do, actually, since I know this, well, no, that spanker is just about right. Um, maybe not. <clears throat> maybe let's pull it tighter. This is obviously a big sail with a lot of sheet. Therefore, the winch is hard to pull. It takes a bit of time. Go with that. So we're going to check. Am I happy with healing? Am I happy with my course? giving me a slow but present starboard tenant starboard turning tendency starboard turning tendency oh, this is not uncommon for the emerald archipelago waking up to a storm
still running before the wind though. Or at least close enough before the wind that I don't care about anything else. Uh, what time is it? Oh, we slept in nice and late. We're going to be going right through this storm. <laughs> so, I'm planning on, like, set, I'm setting myself up for broad reach. Or, uh, yeah, I think it's broad reach for the storm, just the way this wind is. Right? I want to keep on going east. Storm's coming right on top of us. I'll use the spinnaker. Or not the spinnaker, the spanker. Which shouldn't put too much too much healing force. It does put a lot of turning force in though. So I guess we need less of it. We got big waves and big weather right now. We have Happy Bay in sight. Might take us a little bit to get there, though. At this point in the journey. Hey, it's daytime. Okay, let's see. Can we see anything? I left my lantern on back here. That was silly of me. All right. Oh, it's right there. Okay, where's the sun, uh, wind coming out of? Ugh. Spinnaker, go! Jib, go! I mean, <clears throat> when you <laughs> the wind is coming directly out of that island. Or at least where that island is. So we'll just get ourselves set up for a little sail around, I guess. So I'm tightening down my winches here as much as I can because we're going to tack through the wind. I'm going to try to do it without having to go backwards. But it may just be that the ship isn't capable of doing that. We'll find out. Okay. Our angle on the wind right now is good. Oops, we need to be up here. Hard over to... to starboard. So the goal is to carry my, my, my momentum through as the wind falls off. Okay, whatever momentum we had is gone. This is not going to provide us any useful thrust, so I'm going to pull it because I don't want it to counteract my turning tendency. We're still coasting through.
I can begin tightening the jib over here to help me through this turn. Let it out. And we're going to be on the other side, so I can just let this all the way out. Okay. We are now pulling through the tack. Straighten up the wheel. And we're continuing to move forward. That was smooth. Certainly way easier than it would have been if I tried to do it with uh, mainsails and stuff down. We're finally coming up on it. I keep wanting to go upstairs because I played so much Sea of Thieves. Like in Sea of Thieves the, on the galleon, the steering wheel's up here. <laughs> or the wheel is up here, the steering wheel. I guess it is the steerage, isn't it? Um, but this is not the Sea of Thieves Galleon. This is a Sailwind Brig. Not to be confused with the Sea of Thieves Brigantine, which is actually misnamed. And so is the Sloop for that matter. Sea of Thieves Sloop is more like a cog. Well, <clears throat> I'm worried about this rock, but you know what we can do in this, this ship that we can't do in any other? If you said hit reverse, you're right. So we turn our wheel hard to port. Let this wind just back us up. How's my food and water doing? Doing all right. It's noon. Getting into Happy Bay is difficult, especially with the ship and this particular wind. Okay. We're going to straighten up the wheel. Because we're now moving backwards big time. released. I'm just trying to pull this one until it gets some wind in it. There we go. Starting to move forward. Slowly. Which means my wheels turned the wrong way. Ah, get around here. Okay, keep on hauling on this winch. I 
that'll work. We are, in fact, slowly moving forward. Now, do I let out? Not that one. How much pressure is it going to put, put up, turning pressure is that going to put on the ship? I mean, we are saying like very close hauled here. It looks like it's working. Again, not going fast, but going. Hey, I can make out the dock. Okay. Well, you don't need the um, spanker anymore. This is a lot of ship to handle for one person, but clearly doable. And everything else is momentum. Hmm, I'm just gonna do this. Boop. Which will magic pull the boat into position. Where's the other one? Straighten out the wheel. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Interesting last part of this um, mission to get ourselves to... to um, Happy Bay, but we're here. Big ship on a small dock. Yeah, don't go there. You're on the ground. Uh... Are all my masts secured, more or less? Yes. Departing is going to be a pain because we are facing directly into the wind. But that, again, is future me's problem. Right now, we just need to drop off these bits of cargo. So, in this episode, we managed to sail all the way from Astrin to Fort Astrin, from Fort Astrin to the outskirts of the Emerald Archipelago, but the Emerald Archipelago, nonetheless, made it to Happy Bay, which is basically our, oh, where did I toss my map, our halfway point. Um, to to Dragon Cliffs. So this particular journey in the um, in the brig is a two-part journey. I also did, honestly didn't look at how many crates I have of each sort of thing, so looks like I'm carrying five crates for these new missions. I want to double check that just to make sure I'm not missing anything in, in the manifest that I should have. Um, so I should have a total of three, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 14 crates on board when I'm all done.
We made uh, 9,400 gold just getting this far. Okay, what did I say? 14 crates? One, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen crates. We're good to go. We've got water. Um, we've got extra water. We've still got plenty of extra fish here. Extra tuna. And yeah. With that, I'm gonna get my lanterns doused here and call that an episode. Oh, let me find my map. Let's actually show what we did on the map. Okay. So we purchased our brig uh, in Fort Astron. Loaded it up with all the supplies we needed. Needed. Sailed down. Uh, didn't do as much navigation as we should have. I missed a couple of noon sightings and I certainly wasn't doing uh, diligently doing as many nighttime sightings. And we ended up getting off course a little bit. And ended up a little further west of Happy Bay than we wanted. And then I was fuddling around trying to get into Happy Bay. Uh, slept through a couple of nights. Kind of sailed back and forth in the vicinity of Happy Bay trying to get into it. Finally figured it out. Dropped off our cargo manifest of stuff that we have for Happy Bay. And picked up additional cargo to continue our journey to Dragon Cliffs. So we now have a total of five missions to Dragon Cliffs. We had started in Fort Eastern with three going to Dragon Cliffs. Um, so we'll be able to finish this journey heading more south than anything else. South by South Southwest would work. Um, hopefully the wind is favorable to us. But I'm going to worry about that wind and those things in a future episode. Until then, I'm going to turn on my lantern to get ready for night. I'm Sim Gamer, and this has been the maiden voyage of the brig on Sailwind. Goodbye.